the driving force behind uh, ZANU-PF and Emerson Mnangakwa's uh, crusade has always been around the enge- engagement of, of Zimbabwe being open for business, you know, uh, Zimbabweans building their own country, uh, Zimbabweans engaging with the international community, regaining its rightful position in the international community. So now, when you get to a position where people, in fact, really understand that in 2017, these, these chefs actually came into power through some criminal activity, normally called the coup. They have followed it up by rigging an election. Even the 2018 elections were mad, you know, violence. Remember, people got killed then. So in, instead of progressively uh, cleaning the image of ZANU-PF uh, in the eyes of the international community to sustain the engagement strategy, this actually will take them like four or five steps backwards. So it's back to square one for ZANU-PF. And what happens to the people, common people, you know? Uh, while all this well, is happening, I, I think for the for for the common people, this is a is a, is a very worrying position, uh, Mr. Stewart, because you will realize that for some people now they will be forty three years old, and for, so if they project themselves in the next five years where Zimbabwe is stuck in this quagmire that they are in, they will be forty eight years old. In fact, we are about to get into the decade of the pension years we have never known better in Zimbabwe. Pension years we have no pension. Pension years who are not different from teenagers because there's no savings, no access, nothing to fall back on. But on the other hand, you've got a populace that actually was looking forward to a different outcome because all the fundamental statistics in Zimbabwe showed that, look, in fact, the current government was incapable of moving the country in any way. Look, pick up on whatever statistics that you want to pick up. They were all going south. So in effect, I think what you've got, instead of the feeling of despair, disillusionment like that we've seen in Zimbabwe, say 2003, 2008, 2013, 2018, the feeling at the moment from the people that are spoken to, or even if you look at social media postings, if you just listen to people talking, there's a feeling of anger. And I think the feeling of anger is extremely dangerous because it only takes one incident for it to spark up an unwelcome, or unwelcome outcome in development. And for Sadiq, that is exactly what Sadiq doesn't want. One, Sadiq is, is sick and tired of Zimbabwe pulling down everyone in the area. But secondly, and most importantly, they will not want any situation that precipitates any sort of instability within the region because it will actually pull down the region as well. That is where the pressure will come from, from Nangakwa and CCC to sit down and talk to each other. Do you see any unity uh, agreement? In the process? I don't think it will be a unity agreement, but I think we'll get to a position where you've got a big ten government, where you've got a compromise of sorts really in terms of uh, ministerial positions or in, in, in terms of accommodation between the two parties. What you're actually seeing at the moment is typical in the beginning of a negotiation process. What you simply do, you dig in your extreme position.